The Jamal Hunter case was an effort to strike back against wholesale constitutional violations that occur in our prisons and jails. Rathod Mohammed Bai was fortunate enough to represent Mr. Jamal Hunter in a case where he was severely injured while guards turned a blind eye. After he was provided scant medical attention, other guards came and abused him. Uh, his injuries were horrific, uh, his family was devastated, and he had nowhere to turn. We knew when we first started working on this case that Mr. Hunter had had a horrific experience during his time at the Denver Detention Center, but we did not know why. Answering that question is what brought us here today. This case was much more than about just our client, that it was about a systematic culture within the Denver jail of abuse, of, of running a torture chamber, of failing to investigate uh, inmate abuses, of failing to investigate officer abuses. We understood that Jamal Hunter was a symbol of inmate abuse and that we were trying to protect an entire population of our community that often goes ignored and uncared for. There were overwhelming odds that we had to overcome in this case. This was one inmate who was standing up with his attorneys saying, this is wrong, I was hurt. Let's figure out how to stop this from happening to others. Instead of seeking out the truth, Denver was trying to silence it. The government, well-funded and backed by six law firms, over 20 attorneys, fought tooth and nail to ensure that Mr. Hunter's rights would not be vindicated. We uncovered a series of documents that were not produced. We discovered wholesale discovery violations, and it resulted in all the attorneys at Rathod Muhammad by working full time for almost three years to enforce Mr. Hunter's rights. It was after we filed the lawsuit that the independent monitor dug in and discovered that Jamal's complaint was one of many complaints by inmates against guards for excessive force that were going uninvestigated. There were major gaps in the system of investigation and discipline against Denver Sheriff's deputies. Now as a result of our lawsuit and the settlement, there is an external review of that process as well as a number of other significant aspects of the Denver Sheriff's Department. And it's that kind of direct change that our lawsuit brought about that we are most proud of. As part of what became, the, at the time, the largest settlement in the history of Denver, we were able to incorporate into that settlement significant changes to how the Denver jail runs itself. So there's an investigation to the Denver City Attorney's Office, an investigation to the Denver Jail. Uh, there's now an inmate uh, phone system where inmates can directly call the independent monitor. Uh, there are complaint forms in Spanish because we discovered that there was never a Spanish complaint of, of officer abuse uh, because the forms were not in Spanish. Uh, those are just some of the changes that we were able to uh, enact as part of this litigation. We would like to thank CTLA and their tremendous lobbying efforts to give plaintiff's attorneys like us the space that we need to enforce our community's civil rights. Because of the efforts of CTLA and the members of CTLA, we were able to be successful in this case. Uh, the members who have come before us were the ones who paved the road for us to have a successful result in the Jamal Hunter case. It's an incredible honor for us to be nominated for this award, for us to be finalists, and in particular, alongside attorneys who we have the utmost respect for, who are truly at the top of their profession, and whose cases themselves really exemplify the kind of work that we espouse and that we aspire to.